This is episode 328 of the Beyond the Food Show. And today we're going to immerse ourselves in separating thoughts from fact and the power you can gain from it in your life. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Going to Beyond the Food Show, the only podcast that teaches you how to reshape your mind, not your body, to make your life better, bigger, and bolder, your undieted life. I'm your host, Stephanie Dodier, reformed dieter, nutritionist, and coach. You ready? Let's do this. Hello and welcome back. It's going to be a special episode because I did a thing. I did a thing on social media a couple of days ago because I was coaching someone inside of Undiet Your Life about separating thoughts from fact and I had some free time after the coaching call and I jumped on Instagram <laughs> and I did a live on what I had just coached my client inside of Undiet Your Life, which is the power in separating thoughts from fact. And I was, it was so good that I actually decided to bring it over to the podcast. So I'm just going to bring up the subject for you here first, and then we're going to bring in the audio from that live stream from Instagram. And I want to kind of open the topic of separating thoughts from fact. And I want to give you the analogy of stories, right? Your thoughts are the narrative, are the stories you telling yourself. When you observe circumstance in your life or events that are happening, your brain being the most powerful organ you have in your human body gives an interpretation to these events that are happening in your life based on your past experience of life, your family upbringing and so forth, right? It gives a story. It narrates the event that are happening in front of you via your thoughts. So your thoughts are just stories you tell yourself. Now, Telling ourselves stories and having opinions about events in our life is a fundamental aspect of human nature because as a human, one of our primal need is to seek meaning in life. And the way the brain, the human brain does that is by creating stories via our thoughts. So it's almost like an unconscious behavior that we have as human to move events that we're seeing through interpretation through our thoughts via the story we tell ourselves. Now, this is helpful in a lot of circumstance in our life because it helps us understand what is going on. However, this is where the power reside. Creating stories and having thoughts and opinion about circumstance can also be blocking you, getting you stuck, preventing you from moving forward, leading you to believe things about yourself that are actually not true. And one of the common story and narrative that we as people identified as women, we tell ourselves, and tell me if this is you, raise your hand right now, I'm not enough, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, this is not for me. <laughs> all the stories, all the thoughts we're having, all the opinions we're having about ourselves that are causing us to not chase and go after what we want in life. If you have a vision board right now, if you have goals or things you wish you would do in your life, you have that bucket list somewhere and you're not checking things off that bucket list actively, it's probably because of the stories you tell yourself about yourself and why you can't and why you're not worth it and why it's not going to work for you and why you're not good enough. You get me? Are you just like me? <laughs> Are you someone who tells herself or themselves a lot of story about yourself and if you want to be really honest, these stories are preventing you to chase after you what you want. Now, here's the thing. Most of us don't know how to make the difference between stories and facts, truths. The whole thing is just a big blur in our brain. And that's what this podcast episode is going to help you begin to separate thoughts and facts and how to use that to pursue what you want in life, what I call your undieted life, your better, fuller, bolder version of your life. Step one of doing that, of pursuing that life that is totally available and possible for you, is step one, which is separating thoughts from facts. Now, before we go to the episode, I want to remind all of us here listening to this podcast 
that we're going to do a deep dive into our brain and our beliefs about ourselves in the upcoming two-day live event that I'm hosting on September 17th and 18th, 2022. The event is called Enough. Enough is enough of us thinking we're not enough. This is what we're going to create together over these two days is a completely new opinion of ourselves, a new set of belief about ourselves that is going to launch us in pursuing what we want in our life. It's going to be the baseline. We're going to create a new narrative about who we are and what we're capable of. So if you haven't registered for that yet, what are you doing? <laughs> it's $100. We're going to spend three hours together on Saturday the 17th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And on Sunday again, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. It's 100 bucks for six hours of coaching and investing in yourself and in your own brain. Plus, I just want to mention that because we've been getting questions. The $100 you're going to invest to attend the two-day live event will be redeemable towards joining us inside of Undiet Your Life. So if you spend the two days with us and you're like, oh my God, this is what I've been looking for my whole life, which is likely what most of you are going to think when you're done those two days, we're going to give you a coupon and you're going to be able to redeem that $100 towards the registration to Undiet Your Life. And then we can spend a whole year together solidifying this new narrative, this new story you have about yourself and coaching you in the pursuit of your version of your undieted life. So the link to register for that is in the show note or all over our social media. So I can't wait to meet you. Now, with that said, I'm going to teach you step one of this process, which is separating thoughts from fact. So we're going to roll in the recording of this live stream. So we're going to talk about separating thoughts from facts and why it matters and how creating this awareness, this ability to separate thoughts from fact is the gateway for you to feel in control, but not in control from a place of fear, but from a place of love and how from that place you can create the things you want in your life. You can create the life that you want from the place of being able to separate thoughts from facts. This is our starting point when we do the work with our client in creating their version of their undieted life. Okay, so let's start with this example. You're walking in the street, right? You're on one side of the street. Let's imagine it's a busy street, one side of the street. And then somebody that you know is walking on the other side of the street. And as you're walking, you're recognizing the person on the other side of the street. You wave, you're like, hey, how you doing? And the person doesn't respond. They don't even wave at you. They keep looking at the floor or at the ground and they keep walking. There's two different paths that you can take in analyzing the circumstance, this your friend walked on the other side of the street and they didn't acknowledge you. One path is you think of the situation and you're like, oh my God, what is wrong with me? What did I do to him or her or they? And then you start replaying the last encounter you had with them, perhaps the last text, what did I do? What's wrong with me? Oh my God, it's always the same thing. People don't get me, they judge me, blah, blah, blah. And then you go down that path and you create the narrative that, something is wrong with you. Or it could also be the narrative that something is wrong with them, right? What is wrong with this person? I was so nice to her. She's so selfish, blah, 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 blah. You create that narrative. And if you've been there before, you know exactly what's going to happen in the minutes and the hours following that. You're going to ruminate on this situation. You're going to keep replaying it in your head and you're going to keep either blaming you or blaming the other person. And in your mind, the your interpretation of the situation where the other person walk the other side of the street without acknowledging you is factual information. You're going to feel overwhelmed, stressed, depressed, angry, depending on your thoughts. 
And then it's going to impact the rest of your day. Whatever you're going to work, your relationship with your kids, with your partner, it's going to have a ripple effect on everything. And then it's going to compound, making you think of the situation even more and blaming you or the other person. Scenario A. And in scenario B, same thing happens, but you're thinking, oh, they just didn't notice me. And then you carry on. That's the only observation you're making of the situation. Oh, they didn't notice me. And then you carry on. There's no ripple effect. There's no ruminating. There's no replaying the story into your brain. There is no looking for blame, going back in time on how things have happened in the past. None of that. You just carry on. Oh, she didn't notice me. And then you carry on with your day. Which one are you? A or B? Are you the scenario A in scenario B? Most of the people, the clients that interact with me in my work are scenario A. So raise your hand where, which platform you are on. If you are A or B, I would really love to know if you're more A or B. The difference between the two people or the two scenario is that scenario A, the person believes you believe that your interpretation of the other person's behavior is facts. It's actual truth. And because you believe your interpretation to be factual, to be a truth, you then create a whole bunch of emotion to support this truth. Like something is wrong with me. I'm broken. You're going to feel despair. You're going to feel anxiety because you believe that it's true. You believe that the other person's behavior means something about you and it's true. Here, there we go. That's the proof. Something is wrong with me. Where the other person is not interpreting, so there will be, the other person is not, her, her action of looking at the floor and not acknowledging you is not meaning anything about you. It's their business, your business is just walking wherever you're going and you're just observing the fact she didn't notice me. You don't have an opinion as to why she, they did not notice you. This is where shit goes downhill. Is when you take the fact they did not notice me and then you formulate an opinion about the reason why they did not notice you. And then shit goes down from there. You create a whole bunch of story, a whole bunch of emotion, and a whole bunch of ripple effect behavior from that emotion. And then you impact your relationship to that person, your relationship to your partner, your kids, your work, and it just creates an environment where you feel you are not in control. So I want to invite you today to really take a few minutes to separate what happens in your brain, the thoughts you think in your mind, from what is a fact versus an opinion or a thought. And I want you to think of opinion and thought as the same thing. Because every thought is simply an opinion that you have based on your upbringing, your education, your traumatic experience, the social construct you live by. That's all. Your thoughts, your opinion are not factual. Here's an example that relates to many of us is a body, right? I have a body. That's a fact. You own a human body. You have a human body. That's universally recognized that you have a human body. Now, what is an opinion or thought is I'm ugly. My body is bad. My body is fat. My body is too thin. My body is too thin. My body is too fat. That's the opinion that you have about your body based on the social construct of society, right? Society has an ideology of what a woman, a person identified as a woman, body should look like. So what you do is you look at your self-reflection in the mirror and you bounce what you see in the mirror against the social construct and you have an opinion. You're like, based on what my body should look like, I am then fat. So then you start having the opinion, I am a fat person and that's bad. 
And that creates feeling, probably shame, probably disgust, probably anxiety, which then turns it into action. Procrastinating, constantly ruminating about your body, constantly ruminating about all the things you wish you could do, but you can't because you're fat. This is why we teach this element of differentiating thoughts from fat from the get-go in all of our program. That it is our professional training, that it is on Diet Through Your Life where we work with the average woman, we all start there. We spend the first two to three weeks teaching people the difference between thoughts and facts because from that place, this is how you determine your ability to create what you want in life. Because when you believe that facts are thoughts, like when you believe that what you're thinking are factual information, you are then limiting yourself to what you can create and achieve in your life. Because you're always refrained by the social construct, by your belief around your families of origin, your past experience, your education, because you're bouncing a factual neutral circumstance against Everything that happens to you in the past, you determine what is true or not based on the past. So here's what happened. You ready? This is critical and important. When you believe that your thoughts, your opinion of the things in life are factual information, you keep repeating the same thing, the same patterns, the same cycle, the same reality your entire life. This is profound. When you believe that the thoughts you have in your brain are true and you don't challenge them, you will keep repeating the values and the belief of your families of origin because you believe that what you learn from your family is the fact this is how we should do life. There's no other choices. So you continue repeating all the beliefs and the value and the culture of your families of origin. If you've had traumatic events in your life, which most of us have had, and you believe For example, I was coaching a woman who was physically abused and she had the belief that all men were bad. And she thought that was a fact, right? So she was always apprehensive in going into relationship with men because she believed that all men were bad because that's her interpretation of the situation. Now, here's the thing. Here's where it's essential for us to understand when we start differentiating thoughts from fact, we also need to understand choice and consent. We need to fully assume our agency to believe what we want in our life. And that's challenging. It's challenging, especially if you're someone like me who has spent most of her life probably from the age of 15 to like, let's say 40 or mid thirties, believing that thinner was better, food had to be controlled, I wasn't good enough, I had to work harder, money was scarce, like these were my belief and I didn't know that I could change them. Nobody, like there's not a course in high school, college or university that teaches us how to manage our brain, right? Which should be, but that's a whole other life. There should absolutely be a course given to all little human beings, probably from the age of 12 to 13 years old, explaining them their human brain and how it works. But it doesn't. It's something that we have to intentionally invest time and resources learning. That's the value that, for example, for me as a coach, that's the value I deliver through my program and my coaching is this knowledge and how to use it in your life and in order for you to create what you want. But anyway, we're not taught that. So for me, for 25 years, I believed that the only outcome was to have a smaller body. If I wanted a better life, a more fun life, life that I enjoy, it had to come through the gateway of thing. That was a social construct. And I didn't know that I had the agency to not believe that. I didn't know how many of you watching this video right now didn't realize up to this moment 
that you have the agency, you have the freedom, you have the power to not believe in social construct like thin ideal. Or some of you might be there, but for example, you have the agency to believe that money is not scarce. You can decide tomorrow to think that money is abundant in the same way that you can choose the political party you vote for. You have the choice, the agency to decide who you're going to vote for. We see that in the political aspect of our life. I want you, if you see it very clearly in politics, for example, I want you to bring that to the rest of your life. All the things that you're suffering or struggling or feel stuck. I want you to think this awareness and bring it over there and apply it there. How can you think about the circumstance you're struggling with differently? And the first place we need to start is taking that circumstance, taking that situation and separating thoughts from fact. So when we work with women on body image, that's what we do. We start with, I have a body. That's a fact. I have an ugly body. That's a thought. I have a fat body. That's a thought. Do you want to have this thought? Because when you have this thought, here's what happens, right? This is power. This is choice. This is how you then become capable of creating the life, the goal that you want in your life. Because I'm going to tell you something here, which probably most of you know, but in case you don't, the human brain, the human being is on a preset, is on a setting. Like our brain, our body is in a setting to keep repeating the current reality. Our brain is set Many parts of our brain are there only to keep us alive. And the way for the human brain to keep us alive is to avoid danger, is to avoid things that could be a threat to our life. Now, most of us are fortunate enough that we live in such a safe environment, right? We have a roof over our head, we have food in the fridge, we have money coming in, like we live in a safe neighborhood. Like there's very little threat, physical threat coming at us. What is left for threats as a human being is thoughts, trauma, past stories. So your brain will want to repeat what you've done in the past. So if you are in a habit, for example, of setting goals and quitting through the process of creating the goal, creating the result, your brain will do what many people call sabotaging yourself because that is the safe space for you. It's repeating the reality that you had in the past. Here's another big one for many women in our community is the belief that they're not enough. They keep having the thought, I am not enough. I am not good enough. I don't work hard enough. I don't control myself enough. I'm not professional enough. Whatever the thing is, the I am fill the blank enough. They have come to believe that their thoughts are not enough, that likely originated from their years of judging their body against their culture standards. They've come to believe it was a fact about them. I had this thought for 25 years. Of all the variation of I am not fill the blank enough, I had them all over my life because I saw the thought, I am not enough, as a fact. And when my teacher brought in the awareness that most of the things that goes on in my brain, by the way, we have over 100,000 thoughts in a day, we're only aware of about 1% of them. When we have these thoughts, they're not facts. We can decide to think something else. So I'll tell you my journey of unlearning, unbelieving, that I wasn't enough to I am enough, it took about six months. It took six months of intentionally challenging the situation where I came up with the thought, I am not enough. I had to pause. That's the starting point. If you wanna start challenging facts from thoughts, if you wanna start separating facts from thoughts, here's a three-step process. Pause, 
question and choose. Very simple. So to every situation that we come up to, right? You have to pause and when the thought comes up, I'm not good enough, or whatever variation of it is, pause, take a breath. It's like, oh, I'm having this thought. Is it true? Is it true that in this situation I am not enough or is it just my brain repeating a thought that I've been thinking for decades or years? And then choose. Oh, it's a thought. I can choose to think something else. This is where your power comes in. My brain is offering me the thought, I'm not enough. It's not a fact. It's, a, it's an opinion that I have about myself. Do I want to keep thinking that? Do I want to choose to keep thinking, I am fill the blank, not enough? Or do I want to think, I am enough? That's where it took six months of me practicing this pause, question, and choose. Pause, question, and choose. And the choice that I was making, every time I had the thought, I am not enough, I was making the choice to think, I am born innately worthy. That is a human right. We are born innately worthy. All of us, all of you listening, just like me, are born innately worthy. You can choose to apply this fact that all humans are born innately worthy to all the circumstances in your life. So I would unpause myself and say, no, I am enough. I am born innately worthy. So I can choose to think about the circumstance in a way that I am enough. And it took six months of intentionally coaching myself for the thought, I am enough, I am worthy, to start become automated. Now, if we could get into the science and thing and talk about neural pathways and all of this, I'm going to skip this whole part to you and just say I had to teach my brain to think I'm automated, I am enough, I am worthy. That's what I call self coach. That six month process of pause, question, choose pause, question, choose, is the process of coaching your brain to think in the way that will serve you to create the goal that you want to create for yourself. If you have people that you admire or artists or entrepreneur that you admire in your life and you wish you would have their life, I guarantee you they don't believe everything their brain is offering them. If anyone is doing something out of the ordinary of what socially is acceptable or expected from people, somebody that stands out from the norm is not accepting all of their thoughts as factual information. It's just impossible for someone who's constantly restraining their thinking to create something extraordinary. And I'm going to take this back in as we end this slide. If you are a person identify as a woman who has lived their life and was raised to be a woman. If you don't intentionally clean up your thinking, you will constantly limit yourself to the social construct created for people identified as women in our current society, which is thinner is better, younger is better, more beautiful is better, Work hard, right? Be the best mom you can be and make sure your house is clean and your children are well behaved. And I could carry on all the social construct, all the expectation laid upon women. If you don't intentionally separate thoughts from fact and you don't intentionally change your thinking, you will create the life that is expected from you as a person identified as a woman. Guaranteed. And that life will likely be sparkled with a lot of suffering because what's expected from women in today's society is impossible. So if you're sitting there suffering with a lot of anxiety and a lot of shame, it's probably because you're not separating thoughts from fact and you're believing that all the expectations coming at you are facts, therefore that you need to meet them. So this is where I want you to start, separate Thoughts from facts, pause, question your thoughts. Is it true that I have to blah, 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 blah? And is that going to lead me towards the life I want to live?
That's where I want you to start. Now, a great place to start on this is that pause, question, and choose. So pause when you're having a thought, question it, and then choose the version of that thought that will serve you and help you move forward towards what you desire and your goal. I have a podcast that I recorded a couple weeks ago in our podcast feed called Going Beyond the Food Show, and it's called Making Quality Decision to Create Your Undieted Life. And I talk about the process of choosing your thoughts and making decision in order for you to create the life that you desire. So you may want to go check this out. On that, have a great day, and I'll see you on the next stream. If you are loving what you're learning on the podcast, you have to come and check out Undiet Your Life. This is where we get to hang out together, where you get the individual help applying the concept thought on the podcast while learning new coaching tool that will make your life even more amazing. It's also where you get to apply the learning to think better, eat better, and feel better and create your undieted life, your better, bigger, and bolder life. Go to stephaniedoze.com forward slash join. I'd love to have you join us inside of Undiet Your Life, and I'll see you on the other side.